Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad that you are listening today because we have a special two-part episode for you that we are calling Not Today, Satan. We sit down with our senior pastor, Justin Bridges, and with the general manager and international director at JSMI, Joe McCroskey. The reason we have these two generals of the faith on together is because at Heritage, we've been experiencing an anointing that has really caused manifestations of the Holy Spirit and the enemy to happen. And things are happening in the house that are pretty incredible. And we wanted to sit down and provide some context and give a little bit of wisdom in the area of what do we do as saints when these things are taking place in services? What do we do when we see them taking place at our workplaces? And just give a good, solid biblical response to what God is doing on the earth right now. This conversation was so rich with wisdom and the word and uh, incredible stories that we broke it into two episodes. And we did this so we didn't have to cut any of it out because we wanted y'all to hear every bit of it. So let's go ahead and jump into part one of Not Today, Satan. Let's get equipped, saints. Well, welcome. We're so excited to have Pastor Justin Bridges and Joe McCroskey. Glad to have you guys today. We're so glad to be here. Glad to be here. And Joe is the general manager at JSMI, the international director for Dr. Seville, and we're really pleased and honored to have you. I'm glad to be here today. Just to clear up, so if someone like me who doesn't quite understand, because there's always like the separation of JSMI and heritage, and all of those lines sometimes for an outsider seem a little bit blurry. When you say the international like overseer of that, what does that really entail? I'm more international director over all of all the international all over the world. And that can have HFCC churches in it. It can have Jerry Seville Ministry offices in it. It can just be things we're doing out, outreaches with other churches, facility, and I oversee all those. A lot of them I go on those trips with Brother Jerry. Sometimes it'll be myself. Sometimes it'll be me and Eric go. And uh, it all has to do with the international with Jerry Seville and his vision, which is to make winners and to set people free. Um, so, and I, th I think it's also just it's just overseeing really everything from the fine, just making sure the vision is fulfilled. Correct. It's making sure it's overseeing the financial aspect of things, making sure that we're staying legal within all the different nations. Correct. Um, you know, so it's pretty much running the entire ministry. So uh, this morning I had four deals from Australia. Questions had to be answered, and they're legal questions that we have to answer. Uh, I already talked to Africa. And I've already talked to Canada. So that's part of my morning would be that right there with the time elements. And uh, and it can be anything from a spiritual to a physical. Yeah, it doesn't always have to be spiritual. It can be physical, but we all have to hear the Holy Spirit in the answer. Mm -hmm. Sure. And just like, how did you come to this position? Been with him 43 years. It just sort of evolved into what you're doing now. Well, I came out of banking. Okay, I'm like, there's got to be a professional of, background because the oh, skill yeah, sets aren't I came out of banking. I came out of police work. Okay, so I was banking and police work. So both those, you think, how could those together in the ministry? Well, demon powers, you got to know police work. There it is. Okay, For sure. <laughs> and uh, the other parts, you got to know finances. So years ago, Brother Jerry said, I need somebody that knows spiritual things and physical things. You put them together, you get the supernatural. Yeah. And so that's when I started traveling all around the world, make sure the money went to the right places, the feedings were done. Uh, Justin and myself been overseas several times, does feedings as hard as uh, as high as 30 tons of food wow. in villages, you know, a mm -hmm. uh, total of 90 tons one time. Yeah. You know, that's amazing. It's pretty awesome. And one of the reasons that we wanted to hear what you had to say on this specific topic is we are at Heritage of Faith experiencing just a move of God in a Correct. great way. Um, I think everybody who steps in the pulpit is, you know, preaching lights out and we're seeing things happen in service that we uh, haven't been accustomed to all of the time that you maybe you see out on international places, but we're seeing a more and more and more happen within the church. So we wanted to bring you in because <clears throat> there are people that do have questions about what's happening in service. Correct, correct. Um, I know, Pastor Justin, you've experienced this throughout your entire ministry, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I think for me, uh, I mean, I think a year and a half ago, and this is where, where I put it to the staff, was um, I had an encounter with a lady that came in off the street to the church, and she walked in, and when I first looked at her, um, you know, I thought, oh, she's just, she's just got some questions, but sitting down with her, 
it went in a certain direction that I knew this was more than a natural problem. This was more than just, just something I could pinpoint in that she's going through. But definitely as the conversation persisted, there was something spiritual behind this and it became uh, pretty, uh, um, uh, accelerated, I guess you should say, or pretty, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, we've had, we've had a couple of situations where people, uh, one lady came in, um, Annette and I are in the green room, uh, ministering to her. And, um, next thing we know, it's like, she's throwing fists. And when we start praying and it wasn't, it wasn't like she was, it was totally common. All of a sudden when we started praying, she started throwing fit, you know, yeah. fists. There was another lady that came in that was, um, was uh, sitting there and we're talking all of a sudden as we're talking and we start praying, her eyes roll back in her head and she started getting like violent. And, and that's that point. And so what the Lord told me was, um, you know, that he said in the days to come, you're going to have to deal with a whole lot more it. <laughs> and it was like it. And, and, and it was like, what do you mean by it? And he goes, you're dealing with it, the the spiritual forces, the principalities, right. the Ouch. as Brother Joe um, communicates, the evil spirits that yeah. Yeah. of wickedness in high places. Um, I, I think it's something that that we need to establish up front because there's you have, when you start talking about demonic oppression, demonic possession, evil spirits, vexation. Um, you have <laughs> vexation. You have you have two different schools of uh, of people's perceptions. One is you have one group of people that um, think it's all superstition. Um, right. It's something that's kind of like something that you'd see in the movies. Um, but really what I'd prefer to them is really a Sadducee because there was three things with Sadducees is number one is they didn't believe in the resurrection. And that's what most people believe about Sadducees. But the second thing was they didn't believe in angels and they didn't believe in spirits. And, um, and, you know, so so it's just like the mentality is like, oh, it's just, oh, that's all weird stuff. And then you have the other ditch on the other side that <laughs> it's it, there's a demon behind everything. Everyone right. everyone needs this aspect of deliverance. You know, you know, you know, <laughs> what's his name? You know, <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> say his name. Up. Say you know, it's like <laughs> right. I mean, you can get so weird with it and and not realizing that. We're all of a sudden next to know your glory. The enemy is getting glory. That's right. And God's in glory. That's Nobody's right. getting freedom. And then people are going around seeking experiences and feelings of deliverance right. instead of just the reality of the gospel. And that's what that's really what I want to get down to is the the basics of what's really going on and clear up some of that minutia. Some of that stuff that happens in the house and outside the house happens in the grocery store when you see it. Happens when you you know you pray over a child at the the playground and something happens. It's weird. It can you be got, anywhere. It can be anywhere. Yeah. And uh, you're not looking for it. It shows up. Yeah. We're right. not demon hunters. We don't go looking for it. Jesus didn't go looking for it. Mm -hmm. But when they showed up, he took care of it. Right. And he took care of it with the word of God and power and authority. If you don't know your power and authority, you don't want to mess with it. Right. Because it's like I said, Paul, under that anointing when he was preaching before the sons of Sceva, two scriptures, he was preaching under a powerful anointing but then right after that, in the flesh, you had one in the spirit. In the flesh, you got these guys go up. They're going to hit. They're going to get the hold of the devil, and they do. Mm -hmm. And he says, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know, but I don't know you. Because <laughs> they didn't know their power, and they didn't have the power. Mm -hmm. Now, every one of us as believers have that power. Mm -hmm. Why do you think, Joe, that we're seeing it more often? Oh, you're, the, the anointing level is up. I mean, you're, getting, you're wanting revival on Wednesday nights? Well, you got revival. Yeah. <laughs> so anytime the revival level goes up, demon level goes up or evil spirits they try to put down what god started mm -hmm. and that's the only thing they do that's their assignment he comes to steal kill and destroy and that's yeah. all he cares about he don't care about yeah. the people he cares about putting down the movement of god any way he will and it doesn't matter who he uses can born again people be possessed no but they can be controlled mm -hmm. there's a difference in possession and control and they always have a wheel they have a will at any time to tell that devil that's controlling them, no, I'll not allow you to do this. And he can't do it yeah. because Jesus gave us a free will. Uh, if it wasn't for that, everybody would be saved. Right. Everybody would be healed. Mm -hmm. But we have a will. Yeah. And so the reason is the level of the anointing and to the last days. Yeah. Hey, we're in the last days, so the anointing, and I mean, Brother Jerry, his word for this year, go up another level. 
Yeah. Well, I've always heard you go up another level, you get another devil. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't proper words, but yet well. that was truth. Okay. <laughs> recognizing that we're in the end of times and the anointing is getting stronger in the house. It's getting stronger to be able to deliver people from that. But is there any reason to be afraid of Not what the enemy is doing? Not at all. Uh, I pulled up a scripture just before we came over and it's John five thirty, and I float under that brother Jerry has. And the, it says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear Jesus speaking, as I hear, I judge where they judge word. Mm-hmm. I mean, so if I hear a voice, I can judge it. Uh, and my judgment will be just. In other words, I'll make the right decision. Mm-hmm. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father. The will of the Father and Jesus is everybody set free. Okay? I can't do it on my own. Justin's message on Sunday, I'm telling you, church, if you weren't there, tune in, watch it, because he set it all up about what the Holy Spirit will do through you, and it isn't you doing it. You can't do it on your own. It's strictly right. through God. It's his power. It's his dominion. He gave it to us from the first part of Genesis. With Adam and Eve, he says, I give you power and authority over all this, over the serpents, and and that's in the book of Luke's. But you got to know who you are, and then you got to know the power of the name of Jesus. Right. And I mean, of course, Philip, you know, Philippians' key verses is God gave him a name above all names, all names, no demon above that name. Right. No fear above that name. And fear is the whole method anyway. When people don't understand things, they fear. That devil cannot touch you unless you open up in a fear. And mm-hmm. then there's only certain limitations it could do. Right. You know, we've seen it overseas a lot. Yeah. For everybody listening, we'll go ahead and link that message that, that you referred to sure. in the show notes so you can easily access it. Yeah. And that's the advantage. That's what Pastor was talking about on Sunday was yeah. the Holy Spirit being the advantage. Awesome. That advantage works in the house and out of the house, right? Both, yeah. Yeah, I, I think going back to why also answering your question too, that like Joe did, was the why are we seeing things happen more? Mm-hmm. One, I think people are giving themselves over yep. to other things and opening the door to other things. But also, like you said, where the anointing is, the enemy wants to keep the to keep people um, in a place of distraction. Every, um, if you look at where Jesus, uh, where Je- when Jesus walked the earth, he, he, had, he, he had people that would bring distractions. You know, they didn't realize it or not, but the Pharisees and Sadducees were actually being directed by, by um, spiritual forces right. that would try to, to hate him and have anger towards him, to try to kill him and destroy him. You had, um, you had him going across to the, the Gadarenes and was going over there to set one man free. Why? Because the Decapolis, 10 cities, were all in bondage because of this one man or that was cutting himself in the tombs. And you have like the Apostle Paul, when they were seeing great miracles and things happening, yeah. what we saw there, it said, um, you know, they had the woman with, they said, with a spirit of divination yeah. and said, oh, you, you know, you're you're, you're the prophets of the Most High God. You're the prophets of the Most High God. She's saying a good thing. She's declaring things, but but all of a sudden Paul is like, wait a minute, this isn't. Right. It took some time of discernment at first. This is like, oh, okay, she's singing my praises. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, it's like, wait a minute, this isn't. Yeah, this is this isn't God. God. Let's 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 deal with this. He did. Isn't that a big issue too? I, I think in the church we confuse accuracy and authority. You know, just because someone's accurate doesn't mean they have the authority behind it. No. You know, you can say a right thing. From a, like a, like she was saying a right thing from a wrong place. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I feel like sometimes people will confuse those two. Like they're saying that that sounds right, but uh, where is it coming from? Well, one of the possessions that Brother Jerry that I probably remember the most was we were in Africa, and we went in to get a young man set free from for a family, and uh, sure enough, he's possessed. There's no doubt about it. So Brother Jerry, the first thing he'll tell me is pray in the spirit. And you've heard him even in church say it several yeah. times. When he comes up with a, some kind of a demonic force, he'll always say, I tell Joe, pray in the spirit. Why are we doing that? Because we want to hear what God says to do. Yeah. And so we, we were there, and Red Jerry said, now, Joe, we're going to deal with this man. He said, you put him down. So my job was to get him on the ground. Then Red Jerry, and I'm still praying in the spirit, but I'm physically now putting him on the ground. Yeah. And then Brother Jerry gets on, and he's trying. We're both praying, but Brother Jerry's praying. And then all of a sudden, demon came out, took it right back on, came out, took it right back on. His will, okay? 
And so uh, we, t- we took, that went on for a little while. But then all of a sudden, he looked up and he says, I know who you are. He looked at Brother Jerry and me. Yeah. I know who you are. And he started quoting half book of John. Yeah, the whole, the whole. I couldn't, I couldn't quote the book of John, but he could. I mean, now there's a demon quoting the book of John. And he's in chains. He's yeah. got a chain around. Yeah. He, he's tied to a tree. Yeah. Wow. And but he could quote the book of John. So what you're saying is, yeah, that those demons know the word. Mm-hmm. If you go back to the Old Testament where Jesus went through the trials, you know, in other words, Luke, mm-hmm. fourth, uh, Luke four chapter, you know, where he went through all the temptations. Yeah, temptations. Okay, what did he try to do? He tried to get him to do different things. He said, for it is written. Mm -hmm. He never took the temptations. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. But those demonic forces were there trying to get him to fall, but he never did. And we don't have to either. So we got through. I asked Brother Jerry. I said, Brother Jerry, I kind of feel bad. Now, the guy got set free, and I said, I kind of feel bad. I said, I don't even know that much of the book of John, and I sure can't (laughs) quote it. (laughs) So so I, I learned something that day that, it can be saying the right thing, but has the wrong spirit. Mm-hmm. And and that's something that you have to discern. Yeah. And it's like that lady that threw the baby that time in California. I did not discern that she had a, a spirit because she came up and she said, I need healing for my baby. It's terminal ill. And they had to bring her to me to get her up in front of Brother Jerry and Brother Jesse. And I said, well, at a certain point when it comes to that, I'll call you up and we'll We'll go ahead and we'll pray over the baby and we'll get it, we'll get the baby set free from whatever is healing. And it was a sickness and disease. I never picked up a thing on it. Now, I should have, but I didn't pick up a thing. Maybe I was too busy, wasn't praying in spirit enough because you know how the yeah. different things go, Justin, when you're on the road. And uh, so when it got time, she'd come up. Well, then, man, I recognized the spirit. I mean, immediately. I seen it in the face. And then the Lord said, Joe. And now I've been in praying in the spirit because we've been laying hands on people. And he said, Joe, she's going to throw the baby and said, she's going to go wild. And when she does, you're going to have to lift her up off the ground, catch the baby and hand the baby back to the usher. So now I already know my instructions now w- with this evil spirit. And she was mm-hmm. possessed. And so, but I never picked it up that first part. Real mellow, just this just beautiful girl. You never picked up anything. And the Lord said, well, she was a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, we hear right. that. But they're not all evil. They're not all like Hollywood make those demons and devils, you know. And uh, sure enough, man, Brother Jesse started coming over. Brother Jerry started coming over. She threw the baby, and when she did, I picked her up by the throw of the neck. I caught the baby, gave it to an usher behind me. We got her set free and delivered. She came wanting to be delivered. She didn't know it, though. But it manifested. Sounds like it. It manifests. Oh, she I'm was, glad you she caught the baby. Good hands. Good hands. Yeah, good <laughs> hands on that she baby. Was, way to be. Wildcat. <laughs> way to be present. Focus. Eye on the prize. I yeah. like it. Yeah, she was a she was a wildcat. <laughs> so speaking of babies, I mean that brings up another one of the questions that we've heard. So when all of this is going on, where do those demonic spirits go? You send after them to their... the you send them to the dry places. Not allowed them to go in anybody. But no, it'll never go into a baby. Yeah, it's it's looking it's looking for an open door. That's what it's looking for. Um, you know, um, if you take take for instance, going to the very nature of the enemy is he's subtle, he's crafty. Yep. Right. Um, and so if you take the you know with Adam and Eve in the garden, and you take Eve's conversations with the enemy. It was like it was through a period of time of entertaining the voice. That's right. Um, if you even take it over to um, Genesis chapter four, and you had the situation with Cain and Abel, and the one was the one was upset. The one brother was upset because his offering wasn't received, and it, and it actually says there in Genesis it says he he tells he goes um, he goes look he goes Satan is crouching at the door. Yeah. He goes you must master him. And we know he, he didn't. we know we, we know he didn't master <laughs> him. He he got mastered, and he opened the door, opened and, the it, door. and it caused and it caused murder. So yeah. so it's opening a door. You know, there's um, now, for instance, Jesus told twelve disciples. This is before they're spirit filled. He tells the seventy disciples before they're spirit filled, and he says, "I want you to go out in my name." Cast out devil, yeah. devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, freely as you receive, freely give. Right. Well, they came, come back to him, 
And they said, Master, Master, he goes, even the demons are subject to us. You know what? Jesus never told them, now, hey, you're going to cast out dem- devils. Now, watch out. It might come back into you. He never told them. He, he, never wasn't, told them. he never told them to be fearful of demons. He said, just go cast them out. So this is not something we're to be afraid of. This not is not something that, that we should be concerned that it's going to jump on us and get into us because that's, that's fear-based. And God is not the author of fear. He didn't give us the spirit of fear, no. but a power, love, and a sound mind. And so, so the issue that you'd worry about is, is it's, it's when you give yourself over to the spirit. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a number of things we could go into depending on <laughs> right. how far you want to take this. <laughs> right. I mean, how do you open the door? Okay, you can open the door through occult practices. You can open the door through past experiences, you know, um, you know, meditating, you know, uh, Proverbs 12, 25, it says anxiety is what brings depression. So what's the, what is the, the case there? Okay, because of fear and meditation on something, it brings depression, which brings oppression. And so, so the enemy is looking for an avenue to get into the heart and the mind. Um, to me, substances, drugs, and alcohol, oh, yeah, sure. you're opening Those the door to, a, to an altered state of mind, and then you're opening yourself up to those things. And it allows the enemy to, to work through you, through, mm-hmm. through the substances. And where it might start as just a natural substance abuse, eventually it gets to a thing where it then controls you. Yeah. Yeah, and control perfect. is the right word on anything evil spirit is controlled. How can it control you? Some maybe 10%. Some it could 100%. Mm-hmm. That's when it almost looks like possession, but still might be just control. And that's when, and you'll know because it's pretty well obvious, but control is what he's after. Yeah. But that's in a believer. We're not talking now about a non believer. He can, can, demon can control, or an evil spirit can control a believer. And like Justin said, just by sitting up here on his shoulder. And talking, you know, you're not good enough to do this. You know, oh, you can't be healed because you knew this, this, and this. And uh, and they receive it. But it still it doesn't give them possession. This other uh, thing came up in my heart concerning the, you know, young people. There's a, uh, or kids, there's a scripture, um, it's Luke or Mark 15, one of the two. Um, and it talks about how a woman came to Jesus and said, you know, some translations will read it this way, and it will say, my daughter is, one says, severely demon-possessed. Mm-hmm. My young daughter is severely demon-possessed. Well, if you take it back and you look in the King James, it actually translates, is grievously vexed yeah, by right, the devil. Vexed. It doesn't, it doesn't say yeah. demon-possessed. It that's says right. grievously vexed by the devil. And the word grievously means actually ill. Mm-hmm. It means to, it could be physically ill. But it's a little different. Yeah, so it's not talking about this child is fully Mm demon-possessed. It's more blessed. No, there's there's this illness that she's being... That that that's come on, but we we don't know. But we don't. That's all we know about the story. So it's but it's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, right. It's nothing to be afraid and of. It's all subject to the name of Jesus, whether all it's subject. depression, mental illness, all. or a full blown out evil spirit that's acting a fool in a service. Mm-hmm. Um, when we we watch those things, although there's a gradient of how it presents, there's still one answer. And that one answer is the name of Jesus. Sometimes we see it even in the church service. You know, someone may may go up for and have a manifestation, but not get free all the way. That's right. Why does it sometimes take more effort, either on their part or the minister's part? Why does it take more? Most of the time, it's not going to be on the minister's part. Most of the time, it can be because uh, Jesus said uh, when they came to him, he said, "This only comes out by fasting and prayer." Okay. So if you haven't spent your time in the Word and know what to do, like with Justin and myself traveling like we have, we know what to do. But if I, if I was a new minister, like these young men over here, and I don't really know what to do, then I'm going to have time spend time fasting, prayer, praying in the Spirit, and learning as much. I mean, I had good teachers. I had Norval Hayes that taught me. I had Lester Summerall that taught me. And no, where they taught me is they didn't teach me one-on-one. We had them come into the school, and when they'd come into the school, then I'd watch them and everything. Mm-hmm. But uh, but most of the time, that's that's what you'll that's that's what you'll experience. 
I, I would say also with using the scripture, um, and this is the way I remember hearing it in Bible school um, about that scripture, about this comes out by not by, by prayer and fasting. What I heard and how this was taught is the issue in that scripture was was unbelief. That was totally the, the issue. Yes, the issue was the demonic oppression, but it was the unbelief. That's so correct. when you talk, when you talk about this doesn't come out, but by prayer and fasting, it's not because if you fasted enough, the demon came out. No, you got to a place and a position of who correct. you are, your confidence in who you are, mm-hmm. and it's in that it's in it's in your faith. You know what it, in Acts it says it was your faith. Um, in his name. It was the faith in his name that made that man whole. So it goes back to the same understanding that that the fasting and the prayer is about getting me into a position and place of confidence. Now, when Lester Summerall, that caused the Philippines to totally change the whole dynamic of that nation, when there was a demon-possessed woman that would bite people and it actually went across the airwaves. Her scream, if I'm, if I, if, if something and like that, and she was bitten, and she was, and she was. They said she was bit by demons, yeah. and and so he spent. I don't know if it was a day or six hours or something in prayer and fasting before he ever went in there, yeah. and to deal with this. And from that, it's what caused him to be known in the Philippines. And next, thing you know, he's got a. 10,000 or more member church. It yeah. could even be even greater than that. Yeah. I don't want to just throw out any number, but. But it was it caused a huge impact. But it was the prayer and the fasting. It wasn't so. Hey, if I fast enough, then demons come out. Um, I think another way to answer that question: Why do things not happen when we say the name of Jesus? And I think it goes back to: Is the person you're praying for? Do they want to be free? Well, that's the whole thing. Yeah. You know, I, I'm rem- while we're sitting here, I was reminded of the story that Doctor Savell tells of the woman that he went to pray for that had terminal cancer. And um, he he goes up there, they were close friends. Uh, I don't even, I don't know if they were ministers, friends or not, or if they were just friends, but it was, um, he went up there and he spent several days there. The Lord told him to go up there. So they go in the hospital the first day. And I don't know how many days this was, um, but the gist of the story was is after that first day, he went home and he, he sought the Lord and prayed and said, Lord, what's what's going on? How can we not deal with this infirmity? What's happening here? And why are we not getting any breakthrough here? And the Lord told me, said, it says, she has unforgiveness in her heart towards her husband. Mm. And so he's like, man. So he goes in and he tells her exactly what the spirit of the Lord told him. And, and all of a sudden her whole countenance changed and said that, I think it was my husband had an affair. Like, I mean, it was like like 30 years ago, 20 some years ago. And and he goes, I will not forgive him and I will take it to the grave. And it was like that, and the way her account, that, and it's like, it just totally, it just totally changed. And it was like, that that was a that was a spiritual oppression. That was, this was a demonic oppression that was on her life that would keep her from, from, from re, you know, releasing her husband to where then she could receive the healing. You know, the principalities and powers that Dr. Uh, Lester Summerall told me about, he said, when I first went, he asked the, the denomination he was with if he could go, and they said no. And he said, well, I've got to go because God told me to. So he left that denomination, and he went on his own and at no, with no support or anything like that. And when he got there, then he started the fasting and praying. But that was for more for him, like Justin said. It really wasn't for the demons. It was for him. And he looked out, and he seen a, a principality in power that was setting up on a building. And uh, he said, Lord, what is that? And the Lord said, that's religion. Mm. And that was the first time he had ever, and he had never seen the spirit of religion. And he said it was one of the ugliest spirits he'd ever seen. So it was a spirit of religion. And, but then he got to hearing about the lady, or the girl, actually a younger person. And everybody would go in, they'd have to tie a rope to them because they'd have to pull them out. Because when they went in there, they'd fall under either dead or can fall sick or whatever. They couldn't minister to her. And so he said until he knew he had power, because he said he knew it was principalities and powers, and he knew God said they're all subject to the name of Jesus. So when he had the faith, 
the beliefs, no fear. That's when he went in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and of course, that went all around the Philippines. Well, not only Philippines, went all around that whole region about a lady that was set free. But also in the name of Jesus, it's like uh, what Pastor was saying. Um, there's some people use the name, but you have to use the name and belief. Because yeah. well, if, if you have doubt, it's not going to work. Yeah. Use the name and believe and also be open, right? Open. So, kind of a question I have is we've been having these amazing corporate moments of prayer. And these, these you just see it's happening, like the, the presence is there and everything else. But when people are struggling to be delivered and they're, and they're not receiving it completely in these corporate settings, how do you as ministers, how do you minister to them Monday through Saturday? What does that look like to kind of get them to the place to want to be delivered or to well, want to that, receive what God has for them? That's a part they have to want. Yes. And if they won't agree to it, it won't, that's not going to uh, We had a pastor one time. He had just come out of the Baptist seminary. Good guy. And his wife uh, and him... You know, was on our staff, and finally she just she took on a spirit. Now she wasn't possessed, but boy, she was. It was controlling her, and it was against him, and against our ministry. And so uh, he he brought her in to Brother Jerry and myself, and he says we've got to get this worked out. Well, she wasn't strong enough on her own to let it happen, so we had to keep putting words. So we met with her several times, but she came in. And we got a lot of word in her, got a word in her, and finally got it taken care of. And again, it wasn't possession, and it all worked itself out. So, you know, but but you can't deal with them if they don't want it dealt with or if you don't have the people that do that. And here again, you got to have the right people because you don't want people that hurt them more than they help them. Okay, and I've seen them where they tried to cast a demon out. There wasn't no demon. And all they did was hurt that person more than they helped them. And then that person quit church. Yeah. And that's the worst thing. And they're thinking that, oh, I've got a demon. I've I got, got a demon. demon. And yeah, they, like, and that's been told a lot of people. Born again believers, I know people has told them, you got a demon. They didn't have a demon. Okay. Well, I think also understand that the entrance of the word brings light. That's right. That's good. And that's good. I know I, I, I could tell several stories about people that I know that have been and dealt with demonic oppression. And the bottom line is they're wanting, sometimes they're wanting this quick fix of just deal with the spirit of it yeah. instead of your obedience to follow through to victory. I'm reminded of the of John Bevere's story about being delivered from the spiritual oppression of pornography. And and the Holy Spirit told him, um, he said, I want you to go away for three, I want you to fast for three days. And the Lord gave him specific instructions to do that. Well, it's like you can you can lay hands on someone to be delivered That's from right. the spirit of pornography, but the issue is is the enemy's always going to come back with the That's temptation. Right. The issue is 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 you have to seek the yeah. seek the freedom. Um, in some occasions, I've seen with people is is it's like the Lord, people have come, the word has come, words of knowledge have come, and the Lord said, "Hey, you need to you need to stop this because it's a soul tie." And, and the thing is, is they refuse to do it because they're holding on to it. And therefore the freedom can't come. And all the Lord's saying, I want you to get rid of this. People will do that with anger. They'll do it with, um, letters, past relationships. They'll hold on to, they'll hold on to things that remind them of past relationships. And because they want to remember the feeling, they want to remember that, or they're standing and holding on to something and they won't get rid of it. I'm not saying there's something uh, magical in that particular object, but it's a stronghold in their mind yeah. that they're refusing to cut it out. Um, I believe in some of the situations that we've seen, um, you know, why some people don't have total freedom is, is they've been directed to do certain things and they're refusing to do it. They're holding on to something and, um, and, and not letting God bring about what they want. And so they're, they're holding on to it so hard. Um, but yet it's still, that is what's bringing them the bondage not to experience the total freedom. And see, the people in the congregation won't see that. I mean, they, some of them might, most of them probably won't. So they're saying, why didn't it work? Thank you again for listening to Winning Conversations. This has been, again, the first part of our two-part conversation, and we don't want you to miss any of it. In the show notes, I have linked The Advantage, which is the message that Pastor Justin preached recently, about the Holy Spirit. 
and his advantage in our life and also the notes that uh, Brother McCroskey mentioned that he gave to uh, some of our leadership team. So you have access to those. You have access to the Holy Spirit, and we really hope that this helped you. Join us next week for the second part of this conversation and another incredible episode of Winning Conversations.